Before departing for Vietnam with 92 other Army Rangers and Special Forces troopers, Sergeant First Class Raymond Bill Myers left his dog tags, identifications, and gold ring to his wife and family. He had a bad feeling about his next mission. As the war in Vietnam was escalating and the United States was getting more involved, Myers and the other soldiers were part of a group of military advisors that were to train the South Vietnamese Army amidst their ongoing fight against the Viet Cong. The men boarded a military-chartered Flying Tiger Airline Lockheed Super Constellation aircraft at Lockheed Air Force Base in California on March 14, 1962. The aircraft would make four stops for refueling before dropping the men in Vietnam, but as it headed for the Philippines, it suddenly disappeared and was never seen again. The Flying Tigers of World War II the Flying Tiger Line was the first scheduled cargo airline in the U.S. It was inspired by the Brave Flying Tigers fighter unit of World War II. The unit was born as the first American volunteer group of the Republic of China Air Force in 1941. It was composed of pilots from the U.S. Navy, Army, Air Corps, and Marine Corps that volunteered to defend China and bomb the heart of the Empire of Japan. The group consisted of three fighter squadrons of approximately 30 Curtis P-40B Warhawk aircraft readily trained in Burma before the United States joined the war. The members of the Flying Tigers were officially part of the Chinese Air Force. They received a salary that was far better than the ones volunteers received in the United States. The P-40 Warhawks used by the volunteer group sported the colors of the Chinese Air Force. They flew under the command of American veteran pilot Claire Lee Chenault, also known as Old Leatherface. The unit saw combat for the first time on December 20, 1941, after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. While the United States struggled with several setbacks against the Japanese during the first months of the war, the Flying Tigers proved otherwise. They claimed some admirable victories thanks to their innovative tactics and became a beacon of hope for the American populace. The Flying Tigers became essential to defend the port of Rangoon in Burma and the Chinese aerospace. At the end of World War II, they were credited with destroying over 300 enemy aircraft while only losing 14 pilots in combat. Many of the unit's pilots became cargo pilots in China, while others rejoined the military. But 10 of them created the Flying Tiger Line with some freighters they purchased as war surplus from the U.S. Navy. The pilots paid half the investment, while the rest was provided by Samuel B. Mosher, founder of the Signal Oil and Gas Company. Flying Tiger Line offered cargo services within the U.S. and also carried supplies and American troops across the Pacific. 20 years later, the company increased the number of flights that transported U.S. Army advisors and war supplies to Vietnam. Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 was one of them. A Dangerous Mission After China fell to the Communists in World War II, Korea and Vietnam soon followed. And military escalation in the region after the French defeat during the First Indochina War in 1954 alerted the United States. Thus, the government and the Pentagon began sending Army and Special Forces advisors to train the South Vietnamese Army. The Flying Tiger Lines would transport men, weapons, and equipment to its allies in the region. Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 was operated by Flying Tiger Line on behalf of the Military Air Transport Service. The aircraft used was a Lockheed 1049H Super Constellation with registration number 6921C. The Lockheed L-1049H was a civilian aircraft with two military configurations for the Navy and the Air Force. It had a wingspan of 123 feet, a length of 113 feet, and a capacity for 106 passengers. It was operated by a crew of five, which included a pilot, co-pilot, radio operator, navigator, and flight engineer. Flight 739 was scheduled to carry two flight crews and 96 passengers, out of which 93 were hand-picked Army Rangers trained for jungle environments, electronics, and communications. They all came from different bases across the U.S. The other three passengers were South Vietnamese Army personnel. The flight was scheduled for takeoff on March 14, 1962, from Travis Air Force Base, California, with four planned refueling stops at Hawaii, Wake Island, Guam, Clark Air Base in the Philippines, and Vietnam. Like Sergeant Myers, Ranger Roger Oliver also let his father know of his worries about not returning home. Oliver asked his dad to take care of his wife and baby if he did not make it. According to the Stars and Stripes newspaper, the same happened to Korean veteran Sergeant Howard Gallipo Jr., who told his family, quote, I don't think I'm going to be coming home from this one, but I have to serve my country. Before departure, Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 went through a standard checkup, and no issues were reported. 
The five-year-old Lockheed L-1049H had 17,244 airframe hours and had not experienced any problems to date. After minor maintenance, it was cleared for takeoff. Flight 739 heads for Vietnam. Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 took off on March 14th at 5.45 a.m. The aircraft arrived in Honolulu 12 hours later. It received minor maintenance and the air conditioning system was checked at the request of the flight engineer, but no problems were found. Departure from Hawaii was delayed for 30 minutes because of complaints from the stewardess concerning inadequate crew rest facilities. At 8.40 p.m., Flight 739 finally departed for Wake Island. Upon arrival at 3.54 a.m. on March 15th, the aircraft was checked and no issues were reported. Several coils, spark plugs, and leads were replaced. The cabin crew was also replaced, and the aircraft departed shortly after at around 5.15 a.m. Flight 739 arrived in Guam by 11.14 a.m. It was refueled and rechecked. Its fuel tanks had enough capacity for around 9 hours and 30 minutes of flight. The next stop, at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines, was estimated at 6 hours at the most. Flight 739 took off at 12.57 p.m., and the crew established radar communications with the Guam International Flight Service Station to relay their departure message to the Flying Tiger Line offices. The weather forecast indicated scattered to broken cumulus clouds, and visibility was 15 miles. The aircraft climbed to 10,000 feet with an average speed of 235 knots. At 1.28 p.m., the Guam Center notified the aircraft that radar communication would go off. Minutes later, the flight crew reported to Guam International Flight Service Station that they were 100 miles out and at 18,000 feet. At 2.22 p.m., Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 emitted its last transmission. It shared its current estimated position with the Guam Flight Service Station and confirmed it was expected to arrive in the Philippines at 7.17 p.m. This never happened. Missing in action above the skies. At 3.39 p.m., an operator from the Guam Flight Service Station attempted to contact Flight 739, but was incapable of establishing radio contact. Guam Center established that the flight was in an uncertainty phase at 4 p.m., initiating oceanic emergency procedures. By 4.30 p.m., the status was upgraded to an alert stage. Search and rescue operations then took off from Guam and the Philippines. By 10.30 p.m., Flight 739 was declared lost. By this time, the flight would have exhausted all its fuel. Later in the day, a supertanker reported that its crew had seen a mid-air explosion around 1.30 a.m. local Pacific time. They specified that the night was clear when they spotted a vapor trail that passed behind a cloud. A second later, an explosion occurred. It consisted of a white nucleus surrounded by red and orange colors. The crew also detailed that seconds later, there was a second pulse, and two objects of different sizes fell to the sea. The crew took note of the location and searched the area for five hours, but found no pieces of debris in the supposed wreckage area. An intensive eight-day search by the U.S. 7th Fleet, the Air Force at Okinawa, and warships from Guam and Clark Field found no trace of Flight 739. More than 200,000 square miles were covered, with no success. Investigations The same day that Flight 739 disappeared, Another flying tiger carrying secret military cargo caught fire and crashed in the Aleutian Islands. Based on the report by the supertanker, the aircraft exploded at approximately the same time that Flight 739 had to give its status report. This prompted the military and the flying tiger line to suspect sabotage. An investigation by the Civil Aeronautics Board determined that the flight line areas at Honolulu, Wake Island, and Guam were not secured. Anyone could access the aircraft while parked at each airfield. Nevertheless, given that nothing was recovered from the crash zone, the investigation board concluded there was no proof of sabotage or any other mechanical failure. As the war in Vietnam raged on, the mysterious disappearance of Flying Tiger Line Flight 739 was set aside by the military and the American population. It was not until May 2021 that the topic resurfaced, when families from the deceased Rangers asked the Department of Defense to add the names of the 93 Americans on board to the Vietnam War Memorial. The Department of Defense denied the petition, citing the fact that the soldiers did not go missing in a combat zone. However, the nonprofit organization Reads Across America erected a granite monument in Columbia Falls, Maine, to honor the 93 servicemen. The inscription reads, quote, The names of those who gave their lives and who remain missing are inscribed here so that they will be said aloud and their memory will live on. Please like, comment, and subscribe to watch more content on the history of legendary aircraft and tell us in the comments below about other topics of your interest.